Hey, sweetest potatoes. So today we are going to study about the isolation of mouse and chick embryos and also about human biopsies. So coming to chick embryo. So chick embryos, they are very easy to detect. They are larger than the mouse embryo. And these are mainly used for uh, mesenchymal mesenchymal cells and for primary culture and also for cell proliferation analysis and uh, you can dissect individual organs they are also used for feeder layers and for viral propagation and you can dissect individual organs to generate specific cell types like hepato hepatocytes cardiac cells or muscles or lung cells so these are mainly used uh, chick embryos are mainly used for that and now coming to the isolation so these are the uh, the materials what you need so the main thing here to focus is that uh, for isolation of a chick embryo you need an embryo embryonated egg uh, which is about uh, which has a 10 day uh, incubation so coming to the protocol so I'll explain it with this diagram okay so uh, first uh, the thing what you have to do is that you have to incubate the egg at uh, 38 38 degrees celsius which is a very humid atmosphere and then you have to turn your egg uh, at 180 degree uh, 180 degrees every day and hen's egg usually it hatches at about 20 to and it's 20 to 21 days and for um, so for a whole uh, for a whole embryo if you want to for a whole embryo you have to take an eighth day egg and if it for just for rudiments like just for organ rudiments you take an egg which is about 10 to uh, 13 days and uh, then what you have to do is you have to take your egg and before starting the experiment you have to swab it or you have to wipe the whole thing with 70 percent alcohol and then keep the blunt end in the beaker you know what the blunt end is so the egg will have a narrow end and a blunt end so the uh, the blunt end is kept inside the beaker and then after keeping uh, the blunt end in the beaker you have to crack open the top shell peel off the shell and uh, you, you can see the air sacs at the edge of the air sacs and using this uh, sterile uh, forceps you have to crack it open and and after cracking open the shell again what you have to do is you have to re-sterilize the forceps so how do you re-sterilize the forceps is that you dip it in alcohol and then you burn the alcohol so uh, because the alcohol residue should not be there in a forceps it can harm the uh, embryo so you burn the alcohol let it cool in uh, bss so in a medium which is called as the bss uh, medium that is uh, balanced salt solution and then using this forceps you'll peel out the white uh, you can see here you can you'll start peeling out the white cell uh, shell membrane and once you peel out this you can see this so this is referred to as uh, cam C -A. so once uh, once you peel out so uh, this is exposed so this is referred to as cam that is a coriolantonic membrane with the blood vessels can be seen now uh, you'll pierce the cam with a sterile curved forceps so till now you're using this normal forceps and now you'll use a curved uh, forceps and uh, using that you'll lift the embryo grasping it gently under the head and uh, do not uh, close the forceps completely so if you if you put a lot of pressure pressure then you can break the neck of the embryo so in order to restrict the pressure what you do here is that uh, you put your uh, middle digit or the middle finger in between the uh, curved forceps so that in that way you can reduce the pressure and then you have to transfer once you get the whole of the embryo gently transfer the embryo into a petri dish uh, this is a 9 centimeter uh, petri dish which contains about 20 ml which contains 20 ml of uh, dbss medium yeah so this is how uh, you isolate a, a chick embryo now coming to the next one which is mouse embryo so the mouse embryo it is mainly used uh, it is a source for undifferentiated uh, fibroblastic cultures and it's also used for feeder layers and these are the materials uh, what you need so uh, 
So in the protocol of uh, isolation of the mouse embryo, so the first step is called as the induction of estrus. Okay, so what do you mean by this estrus? So first you have to induce estrus. So induction of estrus is like a period in the sexual cycle of a female mammal uh, except uh, like it's all it's always seen in lower primates but not in the higher mammals so they have this period of heat you would have seen for dogs and and all that like they uh, it is when the female is ready to accept the male to mate or you can just say it's the breeding season or prior to ovulation like for example in dogs they have uh, it happens like one heat uh, or they get onto heat only once in a season so they are referred to as monoesters but if you take squirrels for example the polyesters so that is uh, they are receptive uh, and unless they are impregnated uh, they become uh, receptive again in the same season they can be receptive many times whereas in dogs they are mon uh, monoesters so similarly even for this uh, rats uh, for the mice they have this uh, you have to uh, first induce the estrus it's because you have to get the embryo for culturing right so induction of estrus so and uh, usually you what uh, in uh, animal tissue culture labs you keep the male and the female they're housed separately so if they kept separately then during this time they have to be brought together for mating and the estrus is induced in female three days later when maximum number of mating has happened and uh, which and this will help us uh, enable the plant production of embryo and the timing of successful mating it is determined by examining the vagina uh, each morning like you should get like a hard mus uh, mucus plug so when when you see that in the female uh, uh, mouse then you know okay mating has happened okay so that is the first step that is induction of estrus now coming to the second uh, step is called as the dating of embryo so don't get me wrong dating of embryo so it is not the normal dating what you have but this is uh, like you give a date that is so that is there's something called as the plug date p l u g uh, plug date so plug date is when the day when you uh, detect this vaginal plug that is when you know that this mating has happened so that day uh, you'll uh, so that date is dated as zero so the plug date is uh, dated as zero so from that day the development of the embryo is timed like the full term like the for the proper development of the embryo you it will take about 19 to 21 days okay and and the optimal age uh, for preparing a culture is 13 days for like if you have large cultures so uh, during this 13th day uh, it has a lot of undifferentiated mesenchymal cells which is like the main source for culture so that is why 13 day cultures are taken and one more thing is that if you're handling the embryo uh, beyond 50 percent of the total development you need license because it is against ethical uh, rights and all that uh, to kill uh, like a properly formed embryo so that is why uh, usually uh, what people do is that uh, they prefer they prefer which are about 9 to 10 days old uh, embryos are preferred for culturing so in the ninth day uh, ninth day of gestation most of the organs are formed except the brain and the heart but it is difficult to isolate it is difficult to isolate uh, the different organs and all up to the 11th day so if you're dissecting organs then for dissection of organ uh, you have to it is very easier it is easier at 13th or the 14th day and most of the organs are formed by the 18th day most of the organs are formed so now we are going to murder or we are going to sacrifice or kill the mouse so for that uh, uh, so usually you don't use this term kill the mouse uh, you just say you are going to sacrifice the mouse for the experiment so when you sacrifice the mouse, is uh, sacrificing the mouse is done by cervical dislocation. It's like fast kill, you know, without too much of pain, you're just killing the animal as fast as possible. So before that, what you have to do is the ventral surface. You have to clean the ventral surface because that is uh, where uh, from where you're getting the uh, taking the embryos out. So you have to swab here. You can see in this diagram, you are swabbing the ventral surface by seven with seventy percent alcohol. 
and then in the second picture you can see you have to tear uh, the ventral skin transversely at the median line over the diaphragm and grasp, grasp the skin on both the sides and tear it like pull it from both the directions so that the skin is ripped apart and so uh, then it will reveal the uh, untouched ventral surface of the abdominal wall as you can see in the third diagram here third diagram here so after that uh, cut it longitudinally along the median line and expose the abdo uh, abdomen with the uh, sterile uh, scissors reve revealing the viscera you can see here and at this stage you can see the uterus is filled uh, with embryos which is seen in the posterior cavity uh, abdominal cavity now you have to dissect the so you'll slowly you'll uh, start taking it out you'll take out the uteri and then you'll place it in a 25 uh, to 50 ml screw capped vial which contains about 20 ml of uh, dbss uh, solution now uh, you have to remember that all these steps have to be carried out outside the tissue culture laboratory because the animals can carry uh, a contamination. So until this step, until you put it in the petri dish, it is carried out outside the tissue culture laboratory. Now you will take this intact uh, you try into the tissue culture laboratory and then uh, transfer them into the petri dish which contains the sterile uh, DB. Uh, DBSS medium and uh, here you can see in the first diagram and then uh, you have to dissect out the embryos so while dissecting the embryos there are two steps to be carried out first you have to tear out the uterus with a with two pairs of sterile forceps you can see here you are not just using one pair you are using two pairs of uh, sterile forceps so that uh, you can avoid uh, distorting the uterus and so that the pressure can be reduced look in any at, at any of this point if you apply too much of pressure you're just going to kill the embryo the main uh, aim of uh, isolating is them is, is to grow the cells like the cell should be alive so you will use two um, forceps to reduce the pressure and um, yeah and then you'll free the embryos from that so the embryo will have a membrane around it like if you guys have seen uh, dogs giving birth or any animal giving birth you can see uh, a placenta will be covering uh, around all these um, when they're giving uh, pups right so you have to uh, so in the same way it will be also inside so first thing is you have to remove the embryos from the membrane and the placenta and then it is kept on one side of the petri dish to bleed like the so the blood and everything comes out and then you'll transfer that into a fresh petri dish uh, and if you want to collect a large amount of embryos like you have, if you have to sacrifice not just one mice but many mice uh, then what you do is you at this step uh, you take all this uh, uh, embryos and then you keep it in ice so that uh, it, the cells uh, will stay alive and then uh, sub for subsequent dissection as well as culturing So this is the same thing which I've explained. So now coming to human biopsies. So here uh, in human biopsies, we are not studying in medical terms like how the biopsy is done, or for what it is done, and all that. Here you're getting the biopsy. We are just studying how to store it and how to keep it out of contamination until you start growing it. Okay. So for human biopsies. Um, you know, why do you need human biopsies for detection of cancer and for many diseases, uh, you need to have a biopsy material, right? Yeah, so first step is that you have to go and consult the hospital staff to provide labeled con contain container of medium and you have to arrange for the sample collection from the operation theater uh, or operation room or the pathology room. And what are the materials you need uh, is that you need specimen tubes, which is about 15 to 30 ml and you need some leak proof um, medium and uh, it also should be half filled with culture medium and also antibiotics you have to label them nicely and uh, with name address telephone number and all that so you don't want the biopsies to get mismatched like if one person has a disease and you don't label it properly and it, the result goes to someone else and they think they'll have the disease it can get so screwed up so labeling is really important 
and now coming to the protocol uh, so what you have to do is that you have to go give the container which contain the collection medium to the operating room or the pathology laboratory then collect it transfer the sample into the tissue culture lab and uh, the you have to the one thing you have to remember is that here the sample uh, should be triple wrapped so triple wrapped in the sense uh, first it should be in a sealed tube and this sealed tube uh, should be also sealed with a plastic uh, this thing and also an absorbent tissue uh, which is kept inside uh, with a padded envelope so that there's no the moisture content and all will be absorbed and there'll be no contamination like fungal or other contamination won't be there and uh, usually uh, if you're keeping the sample for 24 hours you will keep it at 4 degrees it is kept for 24 hours and decontamination is that uh, so uh, so decontamination has to be done for some specific samples like for example you have skin uh, skin biopsies and then you have melanomas gastrointestinal tract species so these uh, these be, these are uh, very prone to contamination so these are the superficial specimens which are prone to contamination so for these specimens you have to um, do decontamination before uh, I taking the um, human biopsies yep so that is all about it I hope you guys understood and stay tuned for more classes and consider subscribing thank you